O Lord, we thank you. We thank you for today, for how far you have helped us. O Lord, we thank you because you have not left us stranded. O Lord, we appreciate you because it at all you have helped us. We say be thou exalted in the name of Jesus. And this night we are here. Father, we are here to get free from every bewitchment. O oh Lord, we are here to ensure that our life takes the right turn. And that's why tonight I decree that this night, every form of bewitchment will be permanently over in our lives. In the name of Jesus, every form of bewitchment will come to an end tonight. In the name of Jesus, so shall it be. Thank you, Jesus, for our prayers. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Hallelujah. I want us to clap our hands together for the King of Glory, the God who has helped us so far, and we are so appreciative of Him. Today is the eighth day out of the 30 days, and I know that God that has started the beautiful thing in our lives we complete in the name of Jesus. Yesterday, we started getting over bewitchment. Prayer to dissolve bewitchment. And I explained to us what bewitchment was, how they go about things. Hallelujah. But today, I want to tell us a very small story before we go into prayers. Look, wicked people issue causes on good people. Wicked people, they can issue cause on innocent people who have not done anything wrong to them. Hallelujah. It does not matter whether you commit a crime or an offense, they can just decide to curse you. I've had this a lot of times when people say, I have not said somebody should not eat. I have not collected another person's husband. I didn't. No, 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 no. It doesn't matter what you do, they can just curse you. Hallelujah. The mere fact that you have decided to make progress in your life, the mere fact that you have gone to school when maybe they didn't go or their children couldn't go, the fact that you have a car you are driving, the fact that you look happy, the fact that they were your friend, that is enough reason to make you a target. Remember, bewitched people operate under the evil control. So most times, people that do evil to people, they are not just doing it ordinarily. Ordinarily, they would not. But as soon as the evil spirit comes on them, they can do anything. Hallelujah. I'm going to tell us a story about Hab in the Bible. First King chapter 22. I'm not reading it. I just want to tell us that story. Ahab was a king and followed his father's footsteps by obeying God's command. After 22 years of him obeying God, he turned over because of the wife he got married to, Jezebel, and he started behaving like her. He started worshipping Baal. Now, God warned him. God spoke to him. God, he started even killing prophets at some point. The real prophet of God. He started killing them. Then, remember the Baal, Elijah, fire, water. You remember that story? When they said, call on your God. If he can send him fire to burn this offering, then we'll know who is the real God. Ahab was the king at that point. Hallelujah. Even at that, God slain all the prophets of Baal. Still, Ahab did not give up. He still continued to serve the nonsense God. Hallelujah. I'm just telling you that how God dealt with him today, God is dealing with some people like that. And I want you to be very careful and weary, especially with people you take counsel from. Hallelujah. So after that time, look at what happened. Gilead was fighting. He was a king of Israel. Then he wanted to go and fight those ones to win them. Hallelujah. So what did he do? He called on Joseph to come and support him. Like, we are friends here. Yeah, we are on the Lord's side. Let's go ahead and fight Gilead. Now, God had decreed that he is going to die. Absolutely. When they came... As Joseph, Joseph was like, okay, before we go to that uh, fight, let's seek the face of the Lord. Most people also seek the face of the Lord when they want to do things. But I'm going to underline something for us here that is super bewitchment, that is operational in this world. Now, it's happening now, 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 now. In virtually everybody's life, it's happening now. 
And if you are conscious of this and you know this, then from that point forward, you will no longer be under bewitchment. I decree to you that in the name of Jesus, bewitchment will no longer have its hold on you. Bewitchment will not have its hold on your husband and wives. In the name of Jesus, bewitchment will not have its hold on your children. In the name of Jesus. Because some children are under bewitchment. You know, this child is not behaving normal. Why are you doing this? I keep telling you the same thing. You are behaving as if you don't understand English or whatever language I'm telling you. Bewitchment. Now, I have brought again another 400 prophets of Ba to come and see vision for him, which is the practice of the kings, before he goes to that fight. Apparently, all of them said he should go. Now, Josephat was not convinced. He was a king that knows God. He knows that what these people are saying, they are not prophets of God. So he inquired from Hab, don't you have any real genuine prophet here that belongs to God? Remember, Hab had killed a lot of prophets. That was even why Elijah had to run so that they won't kill him. Hallelujah. Now, he now said, Hab said, okay, there is Micah. Go and bring Micah here. That at least <laughs> I know he is a child of God. He said, but this man I'm asking you to call, that you call the child of God and the prophet of God, has never seen anything good about me before. Ever. So he said, I'm not convinced. Everybody said I can go. I'm going to win the battle. If you call him now, he's going to say something evil to me. And Joseph said, let him come. Just like he said, when Micah come, what did he say? He said, if you go to this battle, you are going to die. Hallelujah. The king said, you see, I said it. That's how he always be. He said, okay, go and lock him up. Since he's always seen evil against me, go and lock him up until I come back from this battle. Now, after that happened, God had given Ahab enough chance to restitute his bad ways, but he never did. Now it was time for destruction. What did God do? This is where I want you to be wary of God that we serve. This is the junction now. Hallelujah. I'm sure if you know this story, you already know the ending of it. This is the junction where you have to be wary of bewitchment. Hallelujah. What happened? God sent. Who are we now going to use to deal with Ahab? He was saying that in heaven. Now, at that point, the point now is Ahab wanted to change his mind about going to that uh, fight. And if he didn't go, he will not die. So what happened? God gave a chance to the spirit of lie, lying, deceit. God gave the chance to that spirit to go to all the prophets to tell him there is no problem again. So they said, no problem. This one said, no problem. Micaiah came back and said, no problem. Hallelujah. God can allow a prophet to tell you something that is wrong. So that he, something that you don't like can happen. If you go against his will too much. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, that means bewitchment comes from evil. God can allow it, even as a child of God. Ahab was a king of God. He was a king of Israel, right there, serving God. He only just moved away from the right part of the, his forefathers, which are former kings. Hallelujah. Look, when you are bewitched, there is what we call continuous confusion of the mind. Everything about you, you are confused. That is bewitchment. When you are naturally mentally fatigued, you are a human being. God gave you capacity. But everything you want to do, you are tired. Not like you are working. You wake up now, you are still tired. If you finish your food, you are tired. That is an indication of bewitchment. You are losing interest in everything. Anxiety. Distress. You are just sleeping. <laughs> what happened? Who called my name? He said, nobody called your name. Why are you shouting from your sleep? He said, nothing, nothing. I could live in You are beginning to speak it. When you are distressed, that way, it's a present. It's showing that there's a presence of bewitchment. Hallelujah. When you have disjointed thoughts, some of you, when you are even in prayers, you are thinking about, I'll be that one go die. Would my landlord chase me away? Are you sure I will get pregnant? You are right there in prayer. That is bewitchment. Oh, they are changing your mentality. Hallelujah. When you feel the sense of emptiness, you are just there, you are all of a sudden thinking, what's even the essence of living in this world? 
This world is vanity. Vanity upon vanity. Brethren, before you declare vanity, at least leave God's way. Because if this world was vanity, Jesus would not have come here. So Jesus just came to save vanity. Is that what you're saying? No. We are valuable. Hallelujah. But the devil had attacked you bewitchment to make you feel this emptiness. Tonight, heaven will redeem you. In the name of Jesus. Tonight, God will bring you back to speed. In the name of Jesus. When all of a sudden you have a sense of loss of self-control, you are bewitched. And this is of two types. You get angry easily. You are like burning fire. They just put petrol. Boom! You are off. Whether your wife, your mother, your father, your friends, you, you, you are not jokeable. Nobody can, you know, create a joke around you. What do you mean? Blah, blah, blah. Husband and wife, nothing like play. There is nothing like love. Fine. Even if you say you don't love the person, why are you not angry? You know that when you lack love for your wife or your children, that's a sin. The Bible said that clearly. If you are angry and you continue in that anger, it's going to generate things that you don't like. It's also a sin. Hallelujah. All of these is as a result of bewitchment. When the Holy Spirit comes to you, normally sin becomes something difficult for you to do. But even with all the Holy Spirit you have, sin is still perpetually embedded in you. Why? You have been bewitched. You don't have self-control. When you suddenly obey things that move towards the world, you are closer to the world than to God. That is bewitchment. All of a sudden, you say, leave these people that are doing Yahoo, Gary. They are trying to make money. Ah! They're trying to make money. So all of a sudden, something that is evil becomes good for you. It becomes okay for you. They are doing runs. There's no job in Nigeria. Just leave them. If now politicians is not spoil everything, would they be doing runs? Ah, hallelujah. You have been bewitched. And all of these will always impact you. Let me tell you, we are going to pray now. I just said I was going to finish this today. And glory to God, we are going to finish now. When bewitchment comes, you won't know because it makes you, you still look normal. You feel normal. Hallelujah. We've had a deliverance section for someone who is a prostitute. And after prayers, her eye opened. Like something left her. We've done that for somebody who is a drunkard as well, who drinks, can drink anything, can drink peace. And after that thing left, her, left him, his eyes was clear and he doesn't drink again. Bewitchment. And then the wife was always complaining. You're always drinking. Are you deaf? Are you this? You waste money, waste money. We don't have enough money. She thought it was by hollering and nagging. She didn't know that there is already a bewitchment. Hallelujah. And when all that happens, one of the things that happens to that person is continuous accident. Continuous. You enter bike before that. You do this. Continuous accident. As you are healing one, another is coming. They put you in arms way. Two, four, seven. I declare on your life today. Bewitchment comes to an end. In the name of Jesus. Ah. It's not an easy thing. Because assuming if, for example, if you are sick now. Everybody knows you are sick. You also know you are sick. Ask a mad woman or a madman that they are mad. They will tell you they are not. And that's where the problem lies. So, bewitchment is terrible. It won't tell you that you don't know what you're doing, but you will think you know what you're doing, but you don't. You are under attack of witchcraft. Hallelujah. Loss of income. If you get a job today, they sack you three months later. If you make money now, you can't even say, this is what I did with my salary. Boom, it's out. Even the food you think you're buying, you're not buying enough food. Loss of income is another end product of bewitchment, loss of position. All of a sudden, what you had, you don't have them again. There's no way you sold your property, but you can't find them again. You misplace things easily. It is the end result of bewitchment. If any of this is in your life, get ready. We are going to pray this night. Hallelujah. Loss of reputation is part of bewitchment. You don't know? When you lose your reputation, all of a sudden, you don't have credit value. That's what we use in economics. You don't have credit value. So you can't just say, hello, um, please, I need maybe 100,000. My I can't go to the ATM. Just send me. I'll send that back to you when I come back in the evening. Nobody can do that for you. They say, eh, you. And it's not like you stole from them. Not like you took their food. But you just lose reputation. People just start hating you for no reason. You get there, everybody's packing their things. As if you have HIV. Even if you have HIV, is this the death uh, warrant? No. But still, people treat you like that. That is bewitchment. Hallelujah. Affliction with diseases and pains. Bewitchment. 
if this place is not paying you today, this place will pay you tomorrow, this place will pay you next tomorrow. And you can't even figure it out. You go to the hospital, they say there is nothing, we can't see anything. But you are under pain. You know that this head is aching you. This tummy is paining you. They say there is nothing there. From hospital to hospital to hospital. I decree on your life today that every form of bewitchment comes to an end in the name of Jesus. But do you know that we Christians, we are one of the reasons why we give ourselves to bewitchment. You too much like miracle. Hallelujah. Ah! The whole of Jesus' era, how many miracles did he perform? Jesus' job was supposed to bring, which he did, uh, uh, salvation to us. Salvation is not miracle. It's walking back with God. You need to understand it. You have to confess Jesus with your mouth. I don't know how miraculous that can be. You have to confess. That means you have to reason. Look at the path you are taking. This path will take you to an end that you don't deserve. Look at a good path here. The reasoning. Hallelujah. But all of a sudden, every Christian had lost their mode of reasoning. Now it's miracle or nothing. As, as you are not putting your hand and everybody's falling down, they say that pastor no get power. <laughs> Hallelujah. What is that miracle for? What is I don't I, I can't. Is it a miracle that brings children? You make love to someone, you get pregnant. If you are not getting pregnant, that means there is bewitchment somewhere or a problem somewhere. Hallelujah. If it is money, which miracle they bring money? You have to work. Hallelujah. If your marriage is not right, you have to work at it. Somebody needs to calm down. Because absolutely, what causes problem in marriage is this one is talking, this one is talking. Pata, 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 pata. That's all. If somebody has a calm nature and has a brilliant form of things, Things will work. We have unbelievers who are living fine in marriage. You, you are a believer, you are praying, but is that your prayer that is making you arrogant? Either from the man to the woman or the woman to the woman. Hallelujah. We Christians are looking for easy way to victory. That is not the way. There is nothing easy anywhere. Hallelujah. Funny enough, there are some ministers that also teach this. Everything is easy. Even the minister is not finding it easy. But he's telling you everything is easy. It is also bewitchment. People that go to some churches where they don't teach you anything real, they are just teaching you don't worry, everything will be fine with miracles and all forms of things. Nobody's telling you about heaven. They are not telling you to avoid your sins. Nobody's actually telling you to work hard. They are just telling you the work you have never done, you will receive it tonight. And then everybody's receiving it every day. That's what they are receiving. Ah, that's bewitchment. Hallelujah. But today, you are going to be delivered from every form of demonic oppression. In the name of Jesus. You are going to be delivered from every form of bewitchment. In the name of Jesus. There was one thing that happened in the Bible. And I just want to bring it to us. Jesus was teaching in the temple. The priests, the Sadducees, the Pharisees, all these people working with him did not recognize him that he was Jesus. But a demonic man in that temple knew Jesus. Jesus was busy teaching and the demonic man interrupted him saying, what have you to do with us here, you Jesus? He could recognize. Jesus of Nazareth, have you come here to torment us before our own time? We know who you are. That's a demon. You are the only one of God. They knew who he was, but the priest did not know him. Hallelujah. Then what happened? Jesus had battled his teaching for a few seconds and dealt with him. If teaching would have removed your clean spirit from this man, Jesus would have continued teaching to ignore. But he came down to deal with him. He abandoned that teaching a little bit. He came and said, come out. So he commanded that evil spirit to go. Which is bewitching people are demonic spirits. Hallelujah. But the Bible says, let their eyes be darkened. Let them not see again. Let their loins continually shake. Tonight, by the power and the blood of Jesus, every bewitchment over your life and then comes to them now. I decree that every evil spirit that is laying hold on your destiny, out in the name of Jesus. Tonight you have to be free. Hallelujah. Today you have to be free. <coughs> I say disgrace. Disgrace. I said disgrace to every bewitchment, to every source of bewitchment over your life. I said disgrace to them now, now, now. In the name of Jesus, I command them to be disgraced openly. They are going to be disgraced openly. In the name of Jesus. But you have some prayers to pray. We have some prayers to pray. Hallelujah. 
For the next 10 minutes, we have to pray these 10 to 15 serious prayers. Please bear these and pray. Hallelujah. Every cause against my life, either herbal or fetish, break down now. Every cause against my life, either herbal or fetish, break down now. In the name of Jesus, open your mouth and pray. Every fetish power against my life, causing causes on me, break down now, now, break down now. In the name of Jesus, every fetish power that is causing me, causing my finance, causing my health, I decree them to break down now. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we are prayed. In Jesus' mighty name we are prayed. A lot of us are in trouble with the kind of anointing we had put our head under. Those people we call daddy. Hallelujah. It's unfortunate it's not everybody's fault because, like I always say, you are just, uh, you will only know what you know. So you can see a man of God, you say, oh, this person is good, is powerful, is only based on the knowledge you have. If you had a better knowledge, you would have seen that, uh oh, this is wrong. So I can't really say you are at fault. But tonight you are going to pray. Every cause of vagabond anointing upon my life. There are some churches you enter, you are going nowhere. You, even if you want to go, you can't leave the church because they have screwed you down. And uh, the only reason why they screw people down is monetary. Hallelujah. You know now, it's monetary. So they'll bill you here, bill you there, bill you here, and you're still following. And even the ones that are not monetary, you know you're not really gaining anything. I advise you, you should see, church plenty. I advise you, you should change. You're going to a church, you can't see a significant increase in your uh, spiritual life. What are you doing there? Is it a party? Hallelujah. You need to be spiritually alive. That's the only essence. Why are you going to church if your spirituality is going to be, re, you know, decaying? Why are you going to church? It's like, I'm going to work and nobody's paying me. Would I continue to go? So you are going to church, your spirituality is not increasing. What are you doing there? Hallelujah. Every cause of vagabond anointing upon my life be removed now. Every cause of vagabond anointing upon my life be removed now in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and pray. Every cause of vagabond anointing be removed now. Removed now. Every cause of vagabond anointing be removed now upon my life in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Bewitchment that has called me, caused me backwardness. Bewitchment that has caused me backwardness. I decree today they come to an end. In the name of Jesus, every bewitchment that has caused me backwardness, hey, an end come to you tonight. In the name of Jesus, open your mouth and pray. Every bewitchment that has called me backwardness, caused me backwardness, I decree in the name of Jesus, and I'll come to you tonight. In the name of Jesus, and then comes to you tonight. In the name of Jesus, in Jesus' mighty name we are prayed. In Jesus' mighty name we are prayed. I put a big mark and a big distance between me and every source of bewitchment. There are some materials. I had a case like that, uh, I think, few like one year ago. It was This person was a member in my father's church. So apparently, it's funny how <laughs> what my dad said. The woman had been in the hospital for like six days. She, her blood count was going down, like the blood, blood in her body was drying out. Every time they put a pint of blood, it will dry out again. When they put that, so apparently I think they put like four. And then my dad was there, my dad is a pastor, and he has been praying. And then they said, <laughs> it's like his power no reach. The truth is, my people, like house people and everybody, they can see the gift of God in my life. So he said, call Pastor B. Call him that this woman is going, you know, that for four, six days, four pints, and nothing. The blood is still low. I don't really know what the count of blood is, but they told me it was on 13. 13, whatever. I don't know what it is. They said it was on 13. Hallelujah. So he called me and I picked. And I said, what's going on? He said, now look at this. That's why sometimes my dad practically stayed with them in the hospital. And the first thing he told me was, this woman must not die. I said, ah, why do you think she should not die? I was just squeezing her. He said, that woman pays her tight and I'm aware. That was the only thing my father said. <laughs> Hallelujah. Some people think it's a joke, but you can negotiate with things. That's, it's not bad. You can negotiate. As a guy, I negotiated. I'm doing your work. You can't kill me. I'm not ready. You can negotiate. 
Hallelujah. Provided you are truthful to it. Not all those kind of the one you do without, you know. <laughs> Hallelujah. So I said, okay, let us pray. By the time I prayed for two or three minutes, I saw that what happened to her was her mother was in a, an occultic, a woman. Now, when the mother died, I don't know them. I've never seen any of them before. When the mom died, she bewitched, oh, I don't know what that means. She just took her daughter and put it in replacement of herself. Hallelujah. But this daughter is a Christian. She goes to church. She's part of the housekeeper, people that clean the church. And now, the fact that they are not, she's not responding, those ones are now taking back what belongs to them, which is now her blood, because that's what they used as reference. Ah, when I saw it, I was like, this woman, well, well, your mother is dead. He said, yes. She can't really talk. My dad was answering, yes, that they've not even buried her, that she's still in the mortuary. It's like maybe three or four months. I said, that's the one who she's going to carry out. She's going to follow her, if, unless she joins her, they are something. But I was not like, ah, it's true that this person sells, you know, all those uh, people that take care of little children. So they have some extra powers that support. That's why I always say, when your child is sick, they say it's something in the head. You carry them and go to one semi Aha. Uh -huh. They take the powers, glory of the children with their own. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's why you see some of them getting to 140 years. They will take your children. A, a normal child will get to 15 and die. You won't know it was because of one small thing on children's head that they will say go to local, local people. Stop going there. Hallelujah. That was it. Then, after the first time, I continued to pray. Then I saw what they did. The pots they used in their house to cook. That was what they used as a restitution for her. So every time that pot joins fire, you know, if you cook soup, you warm it in the morning, warm it at night, you cook another soup. Every time that pot gets to fire, her blood starts draining. If that pot is not on the fire, she will look normal. As soon as they put that pot on fire, she will drain out. And they've been doing it for her that way. So when I saw it, I told my dad, there are three pots in her house. One is kept on the roof. There is one they used to cook. I told them, go and bring everything out. Nobody should put it on fire. As soon as I said that, he said, ah, that means they have to go back home. I said, yes, but remove everything they put on her body because it's fake. All those all, uh, uh, blood they are passing is a waste of time. I said, remove it, remove it. She won't die now. Just go and make sure nobody puts it on fire. The mother said, okay, let me call them. Guess what? At the point of call, he said, this spot here, the person at home said yes. This spot here, he said yes. He said, we are warming soup. <laughs> Hallelujah. They were warming soup at that point. And so they are pouring blood in her body. Everything going out. Hallelujah. Bewitchment from the mother. Unknown to her, she's gone. And she said, take my daughter. She's going to be in my place. And she loved the daughter. That's why she gave, it, gave her that position. Unknown to her, that position was going to kill the daughter. But this is one year later. This woman is doing fine. Everything is fine. But those spots, I told them, break it. Otherwise, you are going back to it. Hallelujah. I decree today that every form of bewitchment that has silenced you, that is about to even kill you, either via your health or via your peace, an end comes to them now. An end comes to them now. There is an authority that is greater than every authority. There is a name that is greater than every name. I'm sure some of you think somebody will bring knife and gun. We do not wrestle in flesh. This wrestle is in the spirit. And I decree from today, every of your potentials that this witchcraft has touched, every of your betterment that they have swallowed by the authority in the name of Jesus, they will vomit it now in the name of Jesus. As from today, the power that transcends power will deliver you absolutely. It will deliver you absolutely. <laughs> it's going to deliver you absolutely. In the name of Jesus. He's saying the value that I am placing on your life would have never be seen in your immediate family or extended before. The value I'm giving to you right about now, it is the value that has never been seen before. Because as the Lord liveth, every bewitchment becomes history on your life. In the name of Jesus. Every bewitchment becomes history. In the name of Jesus. But who said to my debe ikufube muswatetlo o lukwatelege? You are going to pray. Everything that has died in my life by bewitchment. Wake up now. Wake up now. 
by the waking of Jesus on the third day, everything that has died in my life, wake up now in the name of Jesus. Pray, 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 pray. Everything that is dead in my life, wake up now in the name of Jesus. Wake up now, 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 now in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. I want you to pray this final prayer as we go. Every opportunity to become great in my life that had been blocked before, let it open now. Every opportunity to become great. If you are looking for a child, a job, whatever it is, it is an opportunity that was blocked. Every opportunity that has been blocked, I decree tonight, become open in my life. In the name of Jesus, pray, 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 pray. Every opportunity that has been blocked over my life, open now. In the name of Jesus. So shall it be. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Hallelujah. A round of applause for Jesus. I appreciate those of us that are here. Like I always say, if you are yet to subscribe to this channel, please subscribe to it. That's my personal channel. Share this video for your friends and invite them. We are still going to day 30. We're going to be dealing with cases as the Lord appears to us to show it to us. And God will make us victorious in the name of Jesus. Can we shout five powerful hallelujah to the King of Glory as we close? Hallelujah! 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 Glory to Jesus!